Now, OK. So uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk, Automating Cloud Foundry on OpenStack. I'm Xiu Jiao Gao, a cloud engineer from Stack and Win. Uh, most of my coworkers call me, ha, I'm going to use this French tool, <laughs> XJ, because my Chinese name easily sounds like plastic, go to sleep, pedicure in Chinese. <laughs> I don't prefer to sound like that, so I'm happy with XJ as my name. Uh, that's enough about myself. I want to simply introduce the company I work at, Stark and Win. Uh, Stark and Win is a consultancy. Uh, we help our customer being a superhero. Oh, a supergirl. <laughs> uh, by succeeding with their Cloud Foundry story. So basically, we help everything from, um, from what? <laughs> from infrastructure, uh, infrastructure uh, operation automation, to 12 factors, applications, also including like uh, services, like how they integrate service with their apps, all that. Oh. Forget this, I can do this. <laughs> so what is Cloud Foundry? Even you didn't know what is Cloud Foundry, probably now you know because it's at the end of the CF day. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, I know why you laugh at me because I should, I, I should use this. So Cloud Foundry is a pa pass, pass, did I say it right? Yeah, pass for cloud applications. It uh, automates uh, manage, scales, cloud applications. Mm, I forgot. <laughs> Through their life cycle, it's good I have notes. So application can be written like, like a, uh, in just about any language, and it can be deployed like in, uh, in image containers, uh, in, on top of any infrastructure, like uh, OpenStack. So what we will talk about in today's talk today. Here is the outline. I know it looks like a long list, but please don't worry. I clearly know that dinner, dinner time is right after this talk, so I will keep it short. Um, OK, first I will look, we will look at the ecosystem, like CF and uh, IAAS. Cloud Foundry, in this, ha, huh, good. So in this picture, you can see Cloud Foundry is a path for cloud applications. It has many great features. Uh, so developers only need to worry about their applications. Also, it pr provides a service broker can integrate service with their applications. Then Cloud Foundry is deployed by Bosch which enables this a lot of great feature again. Also, it separates CF and uh, infrastructure through CPI, which means cloud provider interface. This actually is how we can deploy CF on OpenStack. Oh. So in this talk, we are going to share with you like stack win way to do things. We have gained many years of experience with this CF ecosystem. Mm. We have helped lots of customers like uh, Intel, Swisscom, Ultimate Software with their CF pl platform and applications. So here today, in this talk, we are going to share those best practice with you. So. Whoever didn't go to dinner early come here is lucky. <laughs> I hope you will agree what I said after this talk. So how do the first question is how do we deploy CF? Deploy automate CF on OpenStack. So first we need to make sure that your OpenStack is ready for deploying CF by running the OpenStack validator. From there, then we can set up like infrastructure resources, like networking, security groups. Then we can uh, 
deployed uh, CF. Uh, before we did the, uh, oh, oh, oops. Uh, uh, yeah. Before we used the Python to set up open stack networking, now we use Terraform. If you want the details, you can uh, go to our GitHub. So most of the things in CF world probably you already know is deployed by Bosch. In order to deploy and manage CF, we have to deploy Bosch director first. Um, there are a lot of great documentation certainly include our blog, <laughs> uh, to introduce you how to de deploy Bosch. So I will not talk about that here. Um, we will focus on how to deploy and automating CF on OpenStack, or any other infrastructure. So how do we automate multiple deployments? So deploy a single CF is pretty easy. The challenge is how do we automate multiple CF deployment across multiple environments and data centers? We use Conquer's Pipeline. Conquer's Pipeline is a tool, probably you already know it's a CI-CD tool, like can for both infrastructure or application or CF. Our pipeline generally goes through dev environment, then staging, then pr production. Uh, we have a project, it's a live, living or living? Living? Living. Living. Living documentation called Codex. So if you are interested, you, you can go to check out that. And oh, thanks for bearing with me with my Chinglish, because some words, you know, I don't <laughs> pronounce it perfectly, but maybe you still get my message. So this is a... What's fun? No, <laughs> okay, so this is a screenshot uh, for one of our pipelines. So in here, this, you can see, I don't know if the people sitting in the back can see or not, but I will explain. <laughs> so first it will deploy to Bosch Light. Bosch Light is a lightweight all-in-one VM Bosch director. After it passes all the tests here, it will automatically deploy to development environment. Then in this environment, it, after all the test pass, it also automatically go to the staging environment. But from here to prod, we set it in a way that you have to man manually click in order to deploy to prod, because probably you always prefer you can let some operator watching your deploy in production instead of being surprised at 3 a.m., right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see someone shared his pain. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so next topic, how do we handle credentials and the certifi certificates so they are safe, which means they are not stored on disk. They are not in your Git repos, right? Even worse, someday you just accidentally git push and you didn't git ignore. You generously shared your credentials with the world. Your boss will be mad. <laughs> so in addition, you also want easily rotate your credentials because some bad guy may just figure out things, right? So you want to rotate them. What, how we deal with this? We use vault, vault, <laughs> uh, and the safe. I, I bet all the people here know what vault is. Safe, safe is the tool we wrote. It's, it's a CL, CLI to interactive with vault. But what benefits the safe has? Um, if we use safe, we can like, we can generate. Uh, Rotate, provide either SSH, SSH keys or uh, certificates or random secret passwords. In addition, the safe can also manage multi multiple votes. That is nice, huh? Your credentials may be safe, 
if you use safe. But that doesn't mean your platform will not fail. Why? Because networking. When your apps, all your CF, or maybe your underlying infrastructure, they may go through a downtime. I see someone nod his head, thank you. <laughs> In this case, you want your whole project become operational as soon as possible without losing any important data. That bring, bring us our next topic. We want convert this failure to success. How we do that? Handle disaster recovery efficiently in a good way. <laughs> How do we do that? We use Shield. Yep, we hired all of them. <laughs> I, now I know how many people watched this movie. <laughs> so now I'm being more serious. So what is Shield? Shield is a distributed uh, framework, framework that start when built. Uh, the purpose is be the guardians of CF galaxy. Galaxy? Yeah. OK, <laughs> now I'm really being serious. So shield, the shield we build can protect, protect your CF, the apps in your CF, and the service in your CF. More specifically, no, more specifically, shield can protect your CF core. What I mean by that? It can back up and restore your uh, CCDB, UADB, and Diego DB after it migrated to Diego, right? It also protects service in CF. Like you may have a Postgres service, MongoDB, MySQL, or Redis, or Rabbit MQ. Um, Shield can back up and restore all those. Uh, Shield also protect, protects uh, any Bosch deployment. As you may know, most of the things in CF world can be deployed by Bosch, or I should say are being deployed by Bosch. So that makes Shield very powerful also, so it, because it can literally back up and restore any Bosch deployment. A tricky part is about Bosch itself, because Shield is also deployed by Bosch. Now, Bosch deploy Shield, Shield back up, Bosch. Hmm. There is a story. Let's say you have your CF running. You have lots of apps and the service in your CF platform. Someone just burned down your data center. So none of, none of your software works. And uh, then what are you are going to do? Probably the first step, you're going to set up hardware, right? The next, you may deploy a Bosch. You deploy a Bosch, then you bring up, the, you use the Bosch to deploy the shield, right? Then you want to use this shield, shield to bring back all your other services, apps, all that. Mm, sounds good. But be careful because you may wipe up your Bosch database. The, the shield that you deploy to use Bosch is often, 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 you know, yeah, often. Uh, so to avoid that, actually we make shield can recover Bosch without required uh, shield running. Is that cool? So basically, you spin up Bosch, you somehow shield just can use shield I to uh, recover your Bosch without spin up a shield. So in this way, everything you had before is brought back. So that's very cool, huh? Yeah. So shield is awesome. Awesome things is really simple. Now you can, you can see the framework of shield is pretty simple. There is a core daemon which uh, deal with all the metadata deal with like schedules, like how 
how you are going to, how often you want to back up your stuff, retention policy, how, how long you want to keep your backups, right? You, um, then target plugin is just you specify what you want to back up. It's a Postgres or it's a MySQL or it's what? Then storage plugin, where do you want to store your backup? Local file system? Mm, doesn't sound good. Uh, S3, Swift, all that. As long as you have the plugin, you can make it work. Certainly, a good uh, software will have a nice user interface and a cool CRI. Mars basically in the Bosch world. If you want, let's say you want to uh, backup to restore CF, you only need to configure a sealed agent on your CF deployment. Same way for the RabbitMQ and the Redis. Then, uh, then for where you want to store your backup, then you can configure your uh, storage plugin here. Then you can back up and restore your stuff. The, another nice thing about this shield is it's very easy to write your own plugin. It's like a piece of cake, like cheesecake, ice cream cake, or strawberry. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> okay, so why writing plugin is like a piece of cake? The reason actually is just uh, because what I shared with you earlier, we said we have this framework because we've taken care of all the things in here, like metadata management, uh, schedule, retention, all that. You only need to worry about the piece you are writing, right? You only need to worry about your solution. Let's say maybe we don't have a, a MongoDB. Actually, we have it now. Let's say we don't have some plugin, but you need it. Hey, you can just write your own. Only write, write your own piece of solution. What's this? Oh, it didn't show up on yours, show up on mine. So, um, but if you don't want to make a piece of cake, you can also ask us to do it, Pay, paying us to do it. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, sh sh sweet. Sh shield is awesome, but it can be better. Like, if you, we can catch the failure before it happens, then we don't need to deal with disaster, right? This, for this, we need monitoring. I'm expecting some laugh for this. <laughs> okay, so monitoring. What we use promises, promises, to, to monitor like CF, Bosch, and and any like many other Bosch deployments, our databases, all that, to, to, in order to be able to monitor things, you need to write your own exporter. Like this exporter should be able to extract the, the metrics for the things you want to monitor. We, we, we deploy these uh, promises use Bosch we use it to monitor deployments in CIF uh, across like several environments and the data centers. This repo, this is, uh, this is how we, we take advantage of this repo. We made this, then we deploy promises using this. So for like for more details, you can go here. Huh, actually, I'm doing good because we, we will finish early. You will be happy because you will have dinner early. The last piece I want to share is that how do we deal with logs? We ship the logs, use Sawmill. Sawmill is another tool we created. I know we created lots of tools. <laughs> so what it does, it basically just aggregates the logs to a like single single stream, then you can just connect to one node in the Sawmill cluster, then your logs will be sent there, then it will help with your live debugging. So basically you can watch your logs while the error happens, uh, help you debug that way. And of course, it also deployed by Bosch. 
uh, and again, we have this release, so it can be deployed by Bosch. Oh, this G Cloud community is one of our GitHub orgs. We have lots of cool things there. So, I shared a lot about how do we do things, like uh, lots of cool tools. Now I'm going to share some information about how do you do things? How do you find out more? Uh, you can go to our blog, just stackandwin.com blog, uh, slash blog. Um, we, we do get feedback from people, like at a conference they will mention, oh, recently your blog saved my day because similar bug happened, then they Googled our blog showed up, just to really help them debug their problem. Um, at least I'm very happy uh, when that happens, because usually no one noticed me. Uh, then there are times people say, I see your company, a female wrote a blog, blah, blah, blah. Then I said, what is the blog? blog? Then start talking, then, oh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, second is our GitHub. Except this cloud community, uh, we have this Stack and Win cloud community. Yeah, those two, we, we have lots of stuff in these two GitHub orgs. Uh, we also can be reached by uh, email, be a hero. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should have another one, be a super girl. At stackwin.com, yeah. Uh, also, we have a CF ambassador booth. It's uh, in the market marketplace C18. So feel free to stop by anytime. We we will have people there uh, talk with you, answer questions, all that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's all. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask. One requirement is that you have to use the mic there. <laughs> Thank you.